A Southern Kentucky community is dealing with another tragedy as 17 year old killed on an ATV accident. The man accused of shooting and killing a ninth grader over this past weekend will face a judge inside of a Scott County courtroom this afternoon. September is just a few days away, which means football season is upon us. Details on some game day changes for Wildcat fans coming up. This is WQYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News and welcome in. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. We now know the name of a 17-year-old who died in an ATV crash in southern Kentucky. The crash happened on Maple Grove School Road that is south of London. The victim has been identified as Christopher Slusher. A 16-year-old girl was also hurt. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has reaction to his death from his high school. And that's our top story at noon. Phil? The Laurel County Coroner tells me the victim of the crash that happened yesterday is 17-year-old Christopher Slusher of the Piney Grove community. The crash happened yesterday here on this roadway, Maple Grove School Road. It happened between London and Kiwi. Police say that the 17-year-old and the 16-year-old were both on the ATV when it rounded a curve and hit an embankment. The coroner pronounced the 17-year-old Slusher dead at the scene. The 16-year-old was airlifted to the UK. I'm told that she did not have a life-threatening injury. Now, within the last several months, the Laurel County Sheriff's Office has worked several accidents like this involving ATVs or motorcycles, and many times the victims are young people. Uh, we've had a, a, a bad year this year in Laurel County with uh, traffic fatalities and off-road uh, fatalities, so uh, it's, it's been really traumatic for the officers. Now, I've learned just in the last little bit that Christopher Slusher was a student at South Laurel High School. We are told that there are grief counselors helping the students deal with this tragedy in Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. And police say they do not suspect alcohol or drugs had a role in the crash, but it all remains under investigation. The man accused in the shooting death of a Central Kentucky teen over the weekend will face a judge. Yeah, we'll be facing a judge this afternoon to answer to the charges against him. That is, uh, a man accused in the shooting death of a Central Kentucky teen. Michael Davidson is charged with murdering 15 year old Morgan Penn. She was shot to death over during a sleepover at a friend's house in Stamping Ground. WKYT's Hillary, Hillary is in Scott County now with a preview of that hearing. In less than an hour, the man accused of killing a 15-year-old this past weekend will face a judge here inside of a Scott County courtroom. Police say 27-year-old Michael Davidson fired shots into the home Morgan Penn was in hitting and killing the teen. We are told Penn did not live at that home but was there with several others for a sleepover. Davidson now charged with the murder of the Scott County ninth grader. Investigators say a 911 caller provided a vehicle description leading to Davidson. However, once police tried to pull him over, he led them on a chase to Frankfurt, where he was eventually arrested. Police say based on some physical evidence found and witness statements, they believe Davidson is the man who pulled that trigger. We have learned there had actually been an arrest warrant out for him since last July for violating his parole following convictions out of Fayette County. In addition to being on parole, the state's Department of Corrections say Davidson's also on probation stemming from convictions here out of Scott County on charges of drug trafficking and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. In Scott County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. And Davidson's arraignment is scheduled for 1 o'clock this afternoon. A former Southern Kentucky School Board chairman who is charged with perjury made his first appearance in court this morning. Dexter Smith resigned from the Knox County School Board earlier this year after surveillance video surfaced showing someone else taking his GED test for him. Our Caleb Noah is in Barberville with the latest on the case. Following an investigation back in April into his level of education, Dexter Smith resigned from his post as school board chairman. However, less than four months later, he decided to run again, but yesterday was indicted on a perjury charge. Commonwealth versus Dexter Smith. In April, we uncovered through security footage that somebody else took the GED test for Smith. Prosecutors claim Smith falsely certified on August 9th that he completed high school or passed the GED test. Plead not guilty. This morning, he pled not guilty to the perjury charge 
and chose not to speak with us. Mr. Smith, would you like to talk to us? Did you get a legitimate GED? During the hearing, a special judge was assigned to the case because Smith is a former elected official. Now, Smith is scheduled back in court on October 11th. In Knox County, Caleb No, WKYT. Now, if he's convicted, Smith faces up to a year in prison and a $500 fine. The Knox County clerk says unless he receives an order from the judge, Smith will remain on the November ballot. Well, the House in Frankfort is holding a special meeting at this noon hour. They're discussing the state's public pension crisis. The House adjourned for the year back in April, and Republicans say they were planning to skip today's meeting, and they followed through. House Republican leader Jeff Hoover sent Democratic Speaker Greg Stumbo a letter blaming him for the pension problem. Stumbo responded to that letter, saying Hoover's statement, quote, only adds suspicion in that many of these agents and brokers who ripped off the retirement systems during the Bevin administration are Republican donors. Well, the heat and humidity are sticking with us as we head through the first part of the work week, but we'll soon get a break from the steamy weather. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Jim. Yeah, we're going to shake it up a little bit around here, Barb. Even with today's forecast not quite as humid as it was yesterday or even over the weekend. So we're trying to trend in a more favorable direction here. There you see some of the camps from across Kentucky and all feature mainly sunny skies. We're up to 88 degrees here in Lexington right now, 84 toward Mount Sterling, but more mid 80s uh, showing up all around us here. Let's throw in the humidity and you could see that we're pushing into the low 90s. I suspect we won't get much higher. It's only about a three degree difference between the actual air temperature and the air temperature in most locations out there. So well, we're talking in the heat index. So that's what we're talking about right there. As we head through the rest of the afternoon and evening, we'll likely be hovering right around where we are heat index wise through the rest of the day and then we get into tomorrow and beyond and we watch a trend all of it comes tumbling down I will track it hour by hour coming up for you in just a few minutes and as those more pleasant conditions are moving in it is almost time for college football in the bluegrass we're just a few days away now from the University of Kentucky's first football game of the season this morning officials from UK and city leaders outlined updates to safety security and parking to accommodate the large crowds at Commonwealth Stadium WKYT's Andrea Walker has a look down at all the changes Andrea the stage is set here at Commonwealth Stadium for a great season home opener with beautiful weather on tap this weekend for the Wildcats. This afternoon, university and city leaders got together to discuss updates on safety, security, parking, and other issues that go along with large crowds, like the ones we'll hopefully see at home games this UK football season. A few things fans need to be aware of are changes in parking assignments, have your permit displayed when you arrive, where non-permit parking is available, as well as how and when to set up and break down tents and tow behind trailers. Uh, the world today is different than the world was a year ago. Uh, and there's been a lot of planning and coordination going on to make sure that this event is very safe for everyone that wants to attend. UK Athletics has created a game day website, ukathleticsgameday.com slash football, and a Twitter account, at UKGameDayInfo, for real-time updates on game day information. The Cats play host to Southern Miss this Saturday. Kickoff is scheduled for 730. At Commonwealth Stadium, Andrea Walker, WKYT. Andrea, thank you. UK officials are also encouraging fans to arrive early and bring as few items as possible. You can find a link to the UK Game Day website and Twitter page on WKYT.com. Keep it here on WKYT News. A lurid sexting scandal involving Hillary Clinton's closest aide is giving Donald Trump some fuel out on the campaign trail. We'll have the latest coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, country music superstar Miranda Lambert is getting a very prestigious honor from the Academy of Country Music. But one well-known Kentuckian is speaking out against the award. Find out why next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. Donald Trump's outreach to African-American voters is taking a hit. And Hillary Clinton is facing new calls to separate her foundation from ties to foreign governments and corporations. Craig Boswell has the latest now on Campaign 2016. It's not racist to be proud to be an American. 
Pastor Mark Burns is a Donald Trump supporter and frequent warm-up act at Trump rallies, but now he's backtracking after he sent this tweet Tuesday showing Hillary Clinton in blackface and accusing her of pandering to voters. I still stand by what the image represents. But I think that, you know, I should have used better judgment. The incident comes as Trump has tried to reach out to minority voters in an effort to beat back Hillary Clinton's claims his campaign is appealing to extremist white nationalist groups. These are racist ideas, race baiting ideas. Ku Klux Klan values, David Duke values, Donald Trump values. Clinton has been off the campaign trail, focusing on fundraising and preparation for the upcoming debates, but she still faces pressure over her ties to Clinton Foundation donors. The New York Times is calling for the foundation to stop accepting foreign and corporate donations immediately. Governor Mike Pence, Donald Trump's running mate, says that should have happened years ago. If it'd be a conflict of interest if she was president of the United States to take money from foreign donors, how was it not a conflict of interest when she was secretary of state? More than half of Americans say they believe Clinton Foundation donors got special treatment from Secretary Clinton, something the State Department and the Clinton campaign denies. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. And the latest national tracking poll from NBC News is showing Clinton's lead over Trump narrowing slightly from eight points last week to a six-point lead this week. There are some new reports that foreign hackers breached voting registration websites in Arizona and Illinois. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid has asked the FBI to investigate the threat of Russian tampering with U.S. elections. He says there is evidence of a direct connection between the Russian government and Donald Trump. Trump's presidential campaign. The investigation comes as voters in Arizona are heading to the polls today. They're selecting candidates who will appear on November's general election ballot. One of the key races involves longtime U.S. Senator John McCain, so that's being carefully watched. And by the way, made a call to the Secretary of State's office here in Kentucky. They say there is no evidence that uh, the registration rules have been breached in any way here. Well, friends, co-stars, and fans are remembering legendary comedic actor Gene Wilder. Now his nephew released a statement saying Wilder died yesterday in his Connecticut home from complications from Alzheimer's disease. Wilder was twice nominated for an Oscar for the producers and young Frankenstein, or should we say Frankenstein. <laughs> right. uh, he also was beloved by generations of children for playing the title role in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Wilder is also known for his roles in comedy classics like Blazing Saddles and Stir Crazy. Gene Wilder was 83 years old. The Academy of Country Music has decided to honor someone it says has the same feistiness as Merle Haggard. Miranda Lambert will be the inaugural winner of the new ACM Merle Haggard Spirit Award. It was created to celebrate artists known for going against the grain, but not everyone's happy about it. Kentucky native and singer-songwriter Sturgill Simpson says he's disgusted that the award is named after Haggard because the music legend had a dislike for the Nashville music scene. But Sturgill noted that he didn't want his feelings to be a reflection on Lambert's talents. The ACM honors will tape tonight in Nashville and run on CBS September 9th. Hope you'll keep it here on WKYT. We're coming right back with your look at weather and much more news as we continue. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. It looks fairly decent out there with all that sunshine showing up across central and eastern Kentucky, but we're starting to heat up a little bit. Not quite as bad as we have in some areas the past few days. It's only 83 degrees in Jackson, 85 in Frankfurt, but a little warmer here in Lexington coming in at 88 degrees. Now we've had some rain around here the past few days, so we've got plenty of moisture still hanging out in the air, and that's going to make it feel just a little bit worse. Area wide, low and mid, and a few upper 80s have been thrown into the mix out there on this uh, Tuesday. Heat index will show you that we're in the low 90s for a feels like temperature. So again, feels certainly uncomfortable out there, but not like it has. We're not to that extreme level yet. We have a good cleansing cold front that's going to roll across Kentucky over the next few days. And when it does, it'll bring and enhance chances for showers and storms Wednesday, and then it just opens the door to a big push of fall-like air. Highs will run somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees, and the humidity, you'll notice it today, but you'll barely even think about it by the end of the week. The only thing you'll really be thinking is, it's not humid. It feels wonderful out here. 
If we go advancing through time here, you'll see the impact of that front. We're into Wednesday, out ahead of it. We'll spot you back in the upper 80s. You'll see some cooler air. That's associated with some rain rolling in. But you'll see it really start dipping into Kentucky Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, 5 o'clock. It's only in the upper 70s. So tomorrow, upper 80s, close to 90. You get into Thursday, upper 70s. And the most important thing is the fact that the humidity will be down significantly. So we've got the mid and upper 80s out there now. Showers and storms coming together already out to our west. And that is that cold front, or at least part of it, some of that energy, is going to be shifting into the area and sweeping us. And that means good things, guys, really good things. Highs in the upper 80s, low 90s today and tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, it's just like you uh, flip the calendar and you are into uh, a fall we've, like We've matter. been good. We deserve it. We, we've been great people. <laughs> we've been good. Right. Okay, all it's right. Our time. It's about time, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll flip that calendar and flip those temperatures. Yeah. Thank you. We're coming right back on WKYT. One of the cows, uh, cats is going to get his chance at the next level. And experience and depth. Mark Stoops has them for the first time. And they could be the difference before the cat. Dave Baker's next with sports. Checking stocks as we head to break this afternoon. The major market indicators are down at midday. On his first call-in show of the year last night, Tom Leach reminded Mark Stoops that come Saturday, this will be the first time the coach will start an offense in which everyone has game experience. And that means Boom Williams will have help once again in the form of JoJo Kemp. JoJo ranks second on the team in carries and rushing yards behind Boom and tied Boom with six rushing TDs. He's had some sparkling moments as a Wildcat, and there's no doubt he's the high-energy guy in the Wildcat backfield. Uh, he's been very consistent. He's been very good. We always love the energy that he brings, and uh, he's been consistent with that and bringing the energy and, and but he, he is more mature he's an older player now he's been around and he's one of our leaders so I've been very pleased with what I've seen out of him now Southern Miss has a 13 game losing streak to Southeastern Conference opponents the Golden Eagles haven't beaten an SEC team since 2000 when they shut out Alabama 21 to nothing at Legion Field that was the final year for Alabama coach Mike DuBose Southern Miss was ranked 25th in the country at the time of that upset, Alabama was preseason number three. Now, if the Golden Eagles pull the upset this year, this guy will have to have a big game. Nick Mullins hit for 63% of his passes last season for nearly 4,500 yards, 38 touchdowns, and only 12 picks. Saturday, he'll be getting play calls from former U.K. offensive coordinator Shannon Dawson, who knows all about the Wildcat defense. The first test of the season, it's against Southern Miss on Saturday night, 7.30 kickoff at Commonwealth Stadium. It'll be televised by ESPNU. One other Wildcat note, two weeks ago, Alex Poitras and the Indiana Pacers agreed to a partially guaranteed contract. Yesterday, the two parties made it official. Pacers announced they have signed the former Wildcat to a training camp deal. If Poitras isn't able to make the 15-man NBA roster, he would likely spend the season with the Pacers D-League team in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Poitras averaged 10.6 rebounds in his four seasons at UK. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider, Mark Berger is sitting in for Dick Gabriel. His guests will include former Wildcat quarterback Maxwell Smith. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. And guys, as we get closer to the Saturday opener, that's a look at sports on your Tuesday. All right, Buzz, thank you very much. Quickly, a story we're following on air and online this hour. The Ag Department, the U.S. Ag Department, has closed offices in five states. There have been some anonymous threats. It's for the safety of employees. The FBI has been called in. And we'll continue to follow that. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. The first hemp harvest at the Henry Clay Estate in Ashland since the 19th century. I'm Sean Moody in Montgomery County. Coming up on WKYT News at 1230, environmental cleanup crews are trying to figure out how big a problem they have on their hands as high levels of arsenic are found in several yards. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $84 million and tomorrow's Powerball jackpot is $154 million.